With today's AI technologies, we can take black and white old videos and turn them into color, enhancing the video quality like in the examples you're seeing now. If you have some older family videos like this one, you can turn them into color with better coloration and refresh the black and white footage. Also, if you have old memory videos like this, you can restore the colors and bring them back to life. Now, let's take a look at this new technique and how we can do it using open source tool. Hello everyone. This is a new framework that was just released recently called SVFR. Its full name is Unified Framework for Generalized Video Face Restoration. What it does, as you can see from the framework diagrams here, is take black and white or old videos and process them through diffusion and latent spaces. It identifies the faces of characters as well as the overall video frames, allowing for further enhancements like adding color, improving facial expressions, and restoring low-resolution videos. For example, if you have old videotapes that look blurry or are in black and white, you can restore them using this framework. This framework is based on Stable Video Diffusion, SVD. Why? Well, you'll need to download the official SVD files from Hugging Face. You'll also need face recognition models from the Ultralytics framework, YOLO face models, and a few face restoration model files to run this. The SVFR framework isn't a completely new AI model. It's more like an application that combines different AI models and face detection tools to enhance videos. The SVFR framework includes custom nodes in ComfyUI, allowing end users to run it on their local machines. It supports tasks like face restoration, colorization, and in-painting, and you can even combine face restoration and colorization in one generation. Since this video framework is based on SVD, it's trained on 512 pixel resolutions, so the output might still be unclear or low resolution at times. However, we can upscale the videos using other video upscalers after restoring the color and faces. Here's how to install it. You can install it in the command prompt window using git clone to clone the custom nodes and then run pip install for the requirements.txt file. There are some necessary components to run this framework like diffusers, numpy, OpenCV, Python, and transformers, which most people will already have installed. However, some dependencies like MoviePy and Skvideo aren't commonly included in most comfy UI setups, so make sure to run the pip install command to install all the required Comfy UI custom nodes. After that, you'll need to download the model files. As mentioned, you can find them on Google Drive or the official GitHub repository. I'd recommend downloading them from Hugging Face for safety. There are four face detection and face restoration files you need to download, the YOLO Face V5M model and three other models in the face restoration folder, ID liner, inside face 360k and the unet files for this framework once you've downloaded all four models put them in your comfy ui models folder under a new subfolder called svfr locate the svfr folder in your models subfolder and place all four files there next we'll move on to downloading the svd model i assume many of you already have this downloaded if you followed my channel We've talked about Mimic Motions and other frameworks like ControlNet that also use SVD for generating long-length videos. Here, I recommend using the SVD XT 1.1, which is the latest version. You can click the link to the official SVD Hugging Face repository, clone the files, and place them in your Comfy UI Models folder. Since I already have SVD in my Models folder from running Mimic Motions, I don't need to download it again. You can place it in whichever subfolder you prefer, but if you're running other frameworks like Mimic Motions or ControlNet, I recommend putting it in the Diffuser subfolder. So I've placed the SVDXT 1.1 in the Diffuser subfolder. Remember this folder path because later we'll use it to direct the custom nodes to locate the SVD folder. Now, let's go back to the custom nodes and walk through how to use them. Basically, you need a video as input, the SVFR sampler, and the model loader. These will help transform your low resolution or black and white videos into colorized and enhanced outputs. In the Comfy UI custom nodes, I've already tried this out. By default, it doesn't include a resize image node, so I suggest adding one between the load video node and the SVFR sampler. This way, if you have a full HD video, you can resize the width and height for faster performance with the SVD and SVFR sampler. 
Since we're using SVD, the SVD loader will load the model through the SVFR custom nodes. As I mentioned earlier, you'll need to point the folder path of the SVD in the settings. For example, in my setup, I've pointed the I2V repo to my diffusers folder, where I've placed the stable video diffusions image to videos X to one, one folder. Once you confirm the folder path is set correctly in the I2V repo, move on to the next settings. Make sure you have the UNet, YOLO, and other model files, like the ID liner and inside face 360K, downloaded and placed in the SVFR folder under your Comfy UI models folder. These five model files will be detected by the load model node, which will select the appropriate files, for example, UNet, YOLO face, Idaho liner, and Insight face 360K for face detection. If you prefer FP16, that's fine. If you want to use FP32 or BF16, that's up to you. The settings here are pretty straightforward. Next, let's look at the sampler settings for this framework. You'll see options for seed numbers, decode chunk size, and more. I'll keep the decode chunk size at the default value of 16, as this is how the framework processes latent data. The rest of the settings are mostly the same, except for the inference mode. The inference mode lets you choose between BFR, face restoration, colorization, in-painting, or a combination of all three in a single sampling step. I prefer using the BFR and color option, as it's what most people will use to enhance colors and restore or improve facial recognition in their videos. This option is what I showed earlier, taking black and white videos, enhancing the faces, and adding color. Remember to set the resolution in the resize image node. I've adjusted it for a landscape ratio and applied it to the BFR and color inference mode. If you have lower VRAM or a less powerful system, you might only be able to run one inference at a time, which will take longer to generate. Let's try an example here. Say we have a 25 FPS video. If we set the frame count to 121, that would be about five seconds. If we set it to 96, that would be around four seconds. Let's go with an even number to make it easier to check. Then let's run this. You'll get an output in the video combined node, which will show the result. The main settings you need to take care of are the resolution, using the resize image node, and the inference mode. If you have a high resolution video with a large width and height, you'll need to resize it to a smaller size because most computers can't generate full HD videos in Comfy UI unless you have something like an H100 GPU. So, resize the resolution for each image frame and remember to choose the right inference mode for the features you want in your output video, whether it's BFR, colorization, in-painting, or a combination of all three. You can check out more options in different inference modes, but I prefer the combined BFR and colorations feature for most low-resolution or black-and-white videos. Videos. It's great for restoring color and enhancing faces. Okay, so we've got the generated result here. As you can see, the color has been restored for this black and white source video, and the face is much clearer. Of course, I resized the resolution using the resize image node because I wanted stable performance instead of processing the full HD video, which is pretty high resolution. If I need to upscale the output video back to 2K or 4K, I'll have to use a video upscaler, which is a separate application. The purpose of SVFR is to enhance color and perform colorization. If you have black and white videos like this, or videos with a lot of noise or unclear images, the BFR inference mode will enhance the video quality. This is how we can restore old videos. Imagine if you have your grandparents' videos like this. You can make them beautiful and restore those memories. It's a great way to apply this technology to real life situations. For example, if you have old movies or archive videos, you can easily restore them using SVFR. Again, I like to use the BFR with colorations inference mode, but you can also use in-painting if you prefer. If there's a watermark or subtitle text, it can remove that for you. If you're focusing on the face, like in this example video, you can enable the Chop Face Regions option. This will only focus on the face detected in the video and apply the inference mode, like BFR and colorations, to that region. Let's say I turn on chop face regions and use the BFR and colorations inference mode again. You'll see how that works here. 
As for system requirements, it doesn't need much. About 12 GB of VRAM should be enough to run this. If you have more VRAM on your graphics card, it will consume more but also run faster. For a video like this, it usually takes about 5 minutes to generate. Let's try it out and see how it looks. Before that, remember to set the resolution for the video. And there we go. We've got another colorized result with SVFR helping to sharpen the face and enhance facial recognition. It looks much better than the blurry black and white version. I think this will be a really helpful tool for restoring older videos from the 60s or 70s or even digitizing old camera recordings. You can bring those tapes to life, restore faces, and add color to black and white footage. For example, if you have old family videos of your grandparents or other relatives, you can restore the colors and make them look better. In this case, I'll turn off the chop face regions option because we're not just focusing on the face, we're enhancing the entire frame. Let's run this example again and see the result. Here's the generated result and it looks pretty nice this time. The color is stable and there's no weird morphing, which is great considering we're using SVD as the base model. Of course, we can experiment with different seed numbers, chunk sizes, etc. to tweak the color performance, but for now, this looks pretty good. The colors are stable and the objects aren't distorting or morphing strangely. So that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.